I'm going to give you some uh, a quick reason why not to abandon Harley Davidson. I saw all these people debadging the bikes. That's okay because actually I debadged my Harley. It's a Sportster, but whatever. I got it back in uh, 1989. It was already debadged in like 90 or 91. Um, I just didn't really like having the Harley Davidson garbage all over it anyway. Now I'm showing this right here. This this cover of this magazine. This is actually Super Cycle, uh, but most of his covers are going to be showing his iron horse like this. Let me say that if you're going back a ways, the biker scene was already getting lame by the 80s, at least by the mid or late 80s. Um, this is when this magazine came out. It was more or less in response to Easy Rider. I know I think it's put out by the same publishing company, but it was uh, at that time it was run by David Snow. David Snow at that time used to live in... Uh, New York, and he used to have his bike chained up with all these chains, and he put a motorcycle cover on it that said Honda it was a theft protection. You know, he had an old shovel head, and uh, which wasn't that old back then, but the Evos were already out. And now, David, I think he lives in uh, David Snow. He lives in, uh, I think he lives in Arkansas, uh, or maybe even before, I think he used to live in Tennessee or something. But he's he's the real deal. What I liked when they started. They're already going yuppie, already by the mid to late 80s. And, um, you know, it was already getting weird. Um, so, I mean, it's like, I know some people talk about, I think, you know, I'm not saying I'm some kind of hardcore, I like riding a motorcycle, let me just say that. I'm not into all this biker culture stuff. Um, you know, I got into the motorcycle, just to give you some history, from a bicycle. I used to like to I still do a lot of cardio exercise. I used to run, 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 and then I got into bicycling because I can go further and still get the cardio exercise. So I had a mountain bike and I had a road bike. A lot of times I would do uh, well over 100 miles on a road bike. And, a, and I already did 150 miles in a day on a mountain bike. So then I, I just wound up getting into a motorcycle from that. I liked the two wheels. I don't like any of this biker culture stuff. I don't drink beer. I don't go to bars. And I always said that it, a female that rides a bicycle every day is going to be a hell of a lot better looking, at least in better shape, than some chick that rides on the back of a, of a motorcycle. You know, so, you know, it's like, whatever. Now, the thing is, with this Iron Horse, the girls, the, the women they showed on here were, um, they were like regular females. And the bikes were ridden. They were actually real people that customized their bike. Most of the time, you know, it, largely they did their own work themselves. They were like welders. They knew how to fabricate. They were engine builders or whatever. You know, in some cases, like, the person was really skilled at welding, so he would do the custom frame. And in some cases, they are better at the mechanics, so they'd be building the engine and the trans and putting Andrew's gears in the trans and stroking the engine and balancing the flywheels for high RPM and all this stuff. Well... But it was more or less, there wasn't a bunch of bolt-ons. And, uh, you know, the word at that time was, there's no such thing as a factory custom. Now you're hearing, you know, that's like normal, right? But back then, in the 80s even, they were mocking people. They were buy buying bolt-on stuff. So I'm leading up to this stuff about this woke stuff, right? It was, you know, ignore that stuff. And... I have, a, I have a solution for that, too, but I can't put that out on here because the same people that own this platform are the same people pushing the woke stuff, and the woke stuff isn't like, it's not necessarily coming from Harley or Tractor Supply or Budweiser. In the case of Budweiser, if you're just throwing out that beer, that's kind of a bad thing, too, because that's got a long Americana tradition, you right? So, you know, these guys are pushing this stuff. They're causing us to basically destroy our own culture, right? That's why I'm saying is don't destroy your own culture. But I can't really say what to do back to them. Nothing illegal, but it's something YouTube wouldn't appreciate. I know that because they they're the same people. Um, but, you know, I knew about a lot of this. You know, I'm rambling a little bit because I'm a little tired right now. But I'm just, my thoughts are very you know, unique on this, and I got a clear insight into this, because this is not something that just happened overnight. They're already getting the rubs and the yups and stuff into this stuff. You know, pretty much today, 
You know, it's pretty good they got into it because, you know, nobody that's a regular working class person can buy one of these bikes brand new. And actually today, I wouldn't, I never buy a new Harley anyway because it's got so much electronic junk on it. I'd rather, and I, I was saying this back in the early 90s, I said, if I ever bought a new bike again, I would buy, you know, like an SNS or an Ultima engine or a RevTech engine or some, something, you know. Not even Harley, right? All from the aftermarket. Baker transmission. You know, uh, I, you know, I don't know if I'd put a rigid frame on it, but maybe it would be the Harley frame. Maybe we would have the quality Harley Springer front end on it. I like the Springers, like the, especially the ones they put on the Heritage Soft Tail, uh, which has the shock in it and stuff. But, uh, you know, in other words, you could get, you could, you're better off piecing the whole bike together from a bunch of aftermarket high quality stuff because a lot of times when you buy a new Harley, you wind up to make it the best. You want to have them go to aftermarket anyway, so why not just make it aftermarket? Now, I just, I just remember, like, on this magazine, they used to say, you know, bolting on some chrome doodads from Harley-Davidson doesn't make your bike custom. But, you know, it's okay doing that, too. I mean, as long as you're riding, that's what I look at it. But they were on to this. They did not appreciate somebody that didn't put, you know, they're, like, sweat and labor into making a bike custom, just bolting on something. And it, and it was like uh, Screaming Eagle. It was always called Shrieking Beagle. You know, because it was so stupid. You know, why don't you make your own, get your own performance parts instead of buying it from the factory? Now, today, that's not thought of it that way, but that's how it was thought of back then. Now, the thing is with these women, like, again, these are just regular girlfriends and stuff. Easy Riders was, uh, that magazine got really stupid after a while. It was, it was good when it first came out, and this was basically David Snow. It was This was in response to, you know, Easy Rider, how they got all messed up. Iron Horse. It was great when David Snow ran it, and I think it came back for a while, but this is mainly in the 80s. You know, it was a good magazine back then, but already the stuff was creeping in. Now, my own personal experience with Harley Davidson, when I got really, really pissed off, um, like my bike, you know, I had a, I still got the Sportster from 89. It's 30. I still got the same one, and I got a, I got another one now, the 91 as a backup, and, uh, I, you know, I was riding it really, you know, I was basically really riding it all out a lot of times. And I, plus it got sabotaged. So I had to have it rebuilt. And when I went into place, the Harley dealers were not capable of rebuilding a bike. And this was in Southern California, where you think there'd be every dealer in the world would know how to do the bike. Nope. They had every t-shirt in the world, belt buckles, uh, you know, uh, riding boots and stuff and sunglasses and all this dumb stuff. But they, they didn't have the bike parts. Now, this is back before the Internet, though. So, you know, it was like early. This is like in 91, 92. So they had one guy between Los Angeles and San Diego. His name was Mike Drenan. Drenan and uh, he had an old pan head. He hopped it up. And he, he, he knew how to do all the flywheels. He balanced mine for high RPM and stuff. And we put the 1200, 20 over in it. Basley valves and all this stuff. Andrews cam. And uh, he, you know, it was Regeneration Motor Works. It's not, it's not around. I mean, I try to look it up. I don't know what happened to the guy or not. Maybe he's not alive anymore. Who knows? But uh, they, uh, he was getting pissed off at it, too, because he goes, you know, Evolutions back then in 91, 92, they're still like, they weren't, nobody was really rebuilding them yet, you know? So mine was already like, this is the first one he did. He did loads of shovels and pan heads. He had a like or he had like red label of UPS a part like a bearing from like Milwaukee, and he was calling around all over the place. He just God, what is with this thing? It's like the dealers didn't have nothing. He had to go all the way across the country calling up dealers and manufacturers. He had to get stuff direct from the manufacturer, just get engine parts. But if you walked into a dealership anywhere in this Southern California. And I was kind of wondering, I, I thought that was strange because I thought they were racing these things, but, you know, and they, they had an 883 class that was, they were racing and stuff, and they had the Buells. I thought they'd have all the parts, but nope, they didn't have them. Not in the dealers. They had all the t-shirts and everything else, all that other stupid stuff. So it was already getting really yuppie way back in the 80s. So I'd say, 
from the mid 80s on it was already creeping in here but it wasn't like everywhere it wasn't like that everywhere there was still a lot of hardcore bikers so since you know and i say it's not really harley davidson that's doing this this is actually it's coming out out of new york i'm not going to tell you exactly who you know it is you know it is and uh you know but you know we didn't you know in other words say another company gets built up and say say everybody runs over to india indian company right the indian motorcycle company and, and say 10 years from now somebody does the same thing right what are you gonna do then right what are you gonna do then right you know that's the thing why you know we build them up and they one guy slips in there and they screw it all up for us and we're supposed to like you know tear down everything we built up because this one guy well first you got to get rid of that ceo right you know that's important and uh you know it's like like i said i was revolting against harley decades ago man it's like it's a good bike but the only reason harley davidson has been in business so long is because of the riders who are basically you know they like every time i swear to god they, they do a step forward in one way and they do a step forward backwards in another way right every time and um you know there's a lot of good things to say about the older bikes even if they're slower and they don't get they're not as fuel efficient they're 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 really good especially the evos man evos evos is basically like a it's like a shovel head in a way that although it's like more super improved with the aluminum heads and all that stuff and i mean aluminum cylinders but uh you know, um, I'm not. I, I really don't even like the twin cam, man. I mean, the twin cam, it's okay. I mean, anything you got is fine. But what I don't like so much is all the electronic junk. That's what gets me. I don't mind if it's a twin cam because you can fix the twin cam stuff. The issue with the, the you know, the, the what do you call those? The bushings on the cam, the cam followers. You can fix that. Um, but it's always been kind of a, you know, a you know, look at me, glossy garbage. I always just like riding the bikes, and that was it, you know. Now, this, this girl, she might think she's a professional model. She's not. She's just, every one of these, I remember I had, I used to, I realize now these, these magazines are selling for big bucks. I don't even know if I have any left. The only thing I saved out of these magazines, they used to have a lot of how-to articles, like how to put points ignition system in your bike. It just takes like six-cylinder Chevy points. And you could run a coil that could run off of electronic and points. That was a good thing. And uh, I remember I was down in California by, you know, it was Kennedy Kennedy's Custom Cycles, which is still around. But at that time, there was this, had, it was like Kennedy Brothers. I don't know if there's like three brothers or four brothers. I think there was three. The one guy that was building all the custom bikes that was always in Easy Riders, he was always in the back. You'd never see him in a storefront selling any kind of product. And he moved. He got out of California back in the early '90s, and he went over to Arizona. Like there was kind of like a family feud over that. Actually, they didn't want him to leave, but the other guys they wanted to stay over there in that California because that's that was their home, even though it was getting kind of overrun. But uh, you know, a lot of people were like, you know, like. But you know, that, the thing is, I'm bringing that up is that, you know, even though that guy was a super duper custom builder on the bikes. Um, a lot of times those bikes were not uh, ridden. They were more for shows. Like Orange County Chopper stuff came after this. I think this magazine is, what does it say here? Uh, this is 85 or 90. Oh, this is 95. All right, well, whatever. So this went in like to, from the 80s to the 90s. So like this bike, this would be a ridden bike. This could be somebody's girlfriend or something. They didn't see like on other bike magazines they would get a bike that it wasn't being ridden like you know 10 20 30 thousand miles 30 thousand miles a year is a lot on a bike but it wasn't being ridden it was basically a show bike or well you know ridden very little then it would pay some model to come in and take a photo shoot with the bike see iron horse was all real stuff you know you could tell like this this female here so this is an older bird. This is in 1980, right? This is one of the early ones. 
Uh, but I think this is before David Snow, though. But uh, you could tell, you know, she just she's a nice looking female, but she's a regular, you know, she doesn't look like one of these glitched up Hollywood models or something like that. She looks pretty regular. But you know, that's the whole point with the whole biker thing. It's like you don't need to have like some super duper fancy bike with all this chrome on it, or if you got a little yellow chrome on a bike. There was a lot of bikes in this magazine that they put out that had yellow chrome in it. You know, some scratches, some nicks in the paint. I mean, it looked good from maybe 15 feet away, but you get up close. There, these these are ridden bikes. You know, and uh, so this one is probably this is you know '88. So I think Dave, David Snow was already running the magazine then. But the thing, it was a real biker culture, and they always had articles on how to you know fix something yourself, like or whatever it was. You know, it could be simple stuff like changing your tire, adjust the chain. You know, because all the bikes were changed until you know they came out with the belts in the '80s or something. Even, well, even the Sportsters. My 91 Sportster, I got an 883 91 Sportster now that's got a chain. It's a five-speed. The first year in the 883 for the five-speed for the five speed was a chain. I said, good. I wanted the chain, man. You know, that's how I am. I mean, I don't like any of this newfangled garbage. But, uh, you know, don't, you know, I mean, that's sort of dumb. I, I really was like, kind of getting annoyed at these videos they're putting especially the videos where some guy was shooting up a harley and blowing it up and i was like what you know you got more money you know what to do with they're just doing that for clickbait maybe a lot of made a lot of money off that video but i think that was a really really bad you know but unfortunately i really can't tell you what to do like well i'm doing something that's pretty radical and i've and that's i've been doing this for way before harley went woke and uh you know, it's basically putting up the middle finger to all the bull crap that's going on. And it was not, it's like I already know what's going on with this woke stuff, man. You know? <laughs> you know? I, and I, I can't put it out here because the same people control that. They control this platform, you know? But don't don't abandon a bike. Don't abandon a bike. You can debadge it. You can do whatever you want, you know? You know, the thing is, uh, but what you might want to do, well, this is why, like I said, I already came to this conclusion decades ago, several three three decades ago. I well, be more than thirty years ago. I already came to this conclusion. I would never buy a whole a new Harley again, ever. I mean, I would like to, you know, the one the bike I just picked up that was cheap, the eight eight three, is my second bike, it's just in case I needed one. Uh, the backup bike. Um, you know, I was kind of looking for a 1200, but I said, ah, 883, it's fine. It just it goes, does a nice job. I had to put a bigger gas tank on it. But, you know, I would look for an older, unmolested bike that doesn't have all this electronic garbage on it and with low mileage. Or, you know, if you get something newer, be prepared to take off a lot of the garbage that is uh, electronic. Like, you can have a simple you know, electronic system that's just like an igniter. Get rid of the fuel injection. Put the carburetor on it, right? Make sure the thing is like old school reliable with some of the maybe the newer stuff. But, you know, if you're going to actually, if you got loads and loads of money, I would have the bike built from scratch. I mean, the engine in it, I don't know. It would be an Ultima engine, an s and or whatever. I don't know, just... I mean, it got with the Delcron cases, the House of Horsepower cases. Have a builder do it. And, it, you know, most every part in there won't even be Harley, you know, like Andrews Cams, Baker Transmission, uh, you know, aftermarket gas tank, aftermarket wheels, and aftermarket fenders, aftermarket exhaust. You know, pretty much the whole bike won't even be Harley anyway. That's what I would do. That's what I would do if I had, like, loads of money. Like, if you're going to spend $50,000 on a bike, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be coming out of the Harley factory. But I would be, actually, I'd be supporting the people that were, you know, making the parts for Harleys, right? But I'm, I'm not, you know, you know, I really can't tell you what I'm doing because I've been doing this before. This went woke anyway because I'm really, like, you know... 
<laughs> I don't want to say. I, don't, I can't say. But, you know. Yeah, 88. And it's like, you know, the 88 cubic inch. 88. Remember? Remember the, uh. Remember that with the, uh. When they, they put them out, they bored them out. They bored them out. It went from 80 cubic inches to 88. That's what you got to do. So, uh. Hint, hint. So, anyway. Over and out. And have a nice day. And uh, don't go destroying your Harley. Don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. I want to leave you with this thought. Did anybody have a cow when, uh. Remember Dykes on Bikes was riding in, a, in these parades years ago? Like more than a decade ago, right? You know, they're pretty woke, right? I mean, uh, they don't really like me because I'm not their type. But, you know, I was just saying, did anybody like get all bent out of shape about their Harley Davidson because Dykes on Bikes were riding the Harleys? No, no. So what, you know, what's the big deal, right? No big deal. That's why I look at it. Anyway, next thing we're going to have is, uh, you know, well, you know what it is. I think that every person that gets in these CEO boards, they got to be, like, intimately familiar with the product. You know, if they're, uh, if they're John Deere tractors, they got to have a background in something, either being a mechanic on them or a farmer. You know, they can't have CEOs that aren't familiar with the product and claim that they're running the company because they're really, the only thing they're worried about is making money for their investors. And you know what happens when you lose touch? The money goes away. Look what happened to Zuckerberg. He made some cop policies, didn't he, just recently? Zuck, Mark Zuckerberg, you know? And, you know, you could have all this money. Look what happened with Susan, Susan W. She had all that money. What happened to her, age 56, right? I mean, really. I mean, you know, money ain't every damn thing. Excuse me, but you know what I mean? It ain't everything in the world, right? And uh, having the glitchiest bike. We're trying, that's another, oh, that was another thing. Used to, it still burns me up today. Like, I got a couple sportsters, but pretty much 99% of my rides are 50 to 100 miles. I mean, sometimes they go more than that, but not much more. Maybe 200 miles max and I'll do that all in a day I don't like cruise around the country or nothing I don't need a big touring bike I can get away with a Dyna I like Dynas and like FXRs and stuff like that or Super Glides what they used to call them but uh, you know I think a lot of these people that buy these big bikes they don't even ride them and if they ride them they ride them like 10 miles or 5 miles and they just go, oh, yeah, look, look, I'm a Harley. You know, they just, you know, it's like, I got a bigger bike, you know, so I'm badass or something. Or they put all this performance stuff. Now, I used to put the performance stuff in a bike, but I was really, like, hammering the hell out of it. But after a while, I just learned, that gets too expensive, man. You wouldn't believe what I went through when I, that thing was being rebuilt, man. I mean, that's I could talk about that for, like, three hours in itself. You wouldn't believe how many hiccups there were. There was a million of them. And, uh, I mean, I'm kind of burned out of working on that bike from, like, 30 years ago. And, you know, well, whatever. I don't want to get on that, on that tangent. But I just want to ride it, so I just maintain it really good. And I don't ride it hard. Just kind of jump on it a little bit. But, you know, these people that they got to have, like, 140 horsepower or something like that. And they got to have 131 cubic inches and... The bike, they don't even use the damn thing. It's like it's just like they were criticized. They were saying that same thing way back in the 80s. You know, like uh, Easy Rider went all weird after a while. And uh, Easy Rider was like they are putting on these bikes on a cover and people are buying a magazine. Those bikes weren't ridden. They were just in shows. And the girls that were sitting, the women that were sitting on the bikes, they had nothing to do with the biker culture most of the time. These were paid, expensive models coming out of some Hollywood agency. The one so Iron Horse kind of like went against that, you know. Said let's let's bring back the real real deal. So these women were like, you know, they were they're not professional models and stuff. Some of them look like that, but you could tell like this girl, she's a she's a regular, you know, female. She don't have the if she was a model, she would have had these would have been out here someplace. You know what I mean? That's how that works, right? She's not she's a regular, you know, you know, neighborhood type female you see in, in, at the gym or something. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, 
What is this? Trump, Harley, and Honda? I don't know what Trump... I don't think they're talking about Donald Trump. I thought they meant it said Triumph. I don't know what's in this magazine, but this is from 1990, 1981. So, I don't even know. Is that a, is that a motorcycle? <laughs> Man, I don't even know what a Trump motorcycle is. Is it a Trump motorcycle? Well, don't tell that guy. that He'll probably do that next. But uh, anyway... Um, that's all we, that's all I got to say about that. Don't, uh, don't go disking Harley and stuff. I mean, you know, they were, uh, we built them up and it's like they win if we tear the whole thing down. Cause what do we got to, you know, what are we going to do? Even if we replace it, they could, they could play the whole game again. We could work our butts off building something up. We built that company. The bike riders built that company, the mechanics, the aftermarket, the machinists, the riders, they we built this comp, we built this company. We, they didn't build it, we built it. So you get, you know, if they could just keep sliding in a new piece of garbage like this, this guy, and it's not because he's German, you know, it has nothing to do with it. it. Has nothing to do with it at all. That CEO, that's it, nothing. It's just saying, oh, he's not an American. It had nothing to do with it. Nothing. He's the worst German he's got to offer. I'll say that, you know. He took the good ones from way back. I'll put one of those in there. Then we straighten Harley out, no problem. Anyway, over and out. Have a nice day.